Oh, well, that was fun, ladies and gentlemen, wasn't it? Carlton go down 87 points to 50, 85 points, even to 57. In what was much the same um, performance as we've seen over the last three weeks. So if you are new around here and you enjoy seeing uh, a middle-aged man suffer um, at the expense of his football club, please make sure you like and subscribe. Um, if you are new to the channel, it's just a click away. You can always unsubscribe later. We cover all sorts here, football, bit of life, bit of everything. We have a bit of fun while we're doing it as well. Um, if you want to become a member of the channel, we've got another membership um, giveaway end of the month. We'll sort something out there, just working through a few little processes there. But that's for a price of a cup of coffee, and it really does help the channel out. We do put a lot of work into our content. So let's get straight into that game. A 28-point loss to the Magpies in a game that really... Is a tough one to really read with this side because before you get onto the complex stuff, you've got to be able to do the basics. And for a side that ranks seventh with the footy and sixth without it is really interesting because it means that you're not in a bad position, but you're not in a good position. And it all boils down to the simple things for me. And it feels like we say it every week, but it's core rudimentary basics. Really rudimentary basics for a side that prides itself on its contested ball, which in this game, again, contested ball-wise, the boys were okay. Do you know what I mean? Dominated stoppage clearances as well, 30 to 18. Um, broke even on contested possessions, even had more uncontested possessions. Scary thing is an average of 1.2 kilometers an hour faster in attack than Collingwood. But when you don't fight for space, we guard space. And it's really funny that this game here and across the AFL, we're third for winning the ball at stoppage, getting our hands on it first, being the first possession from a stoppage or a clearance, right? But we rank bottom two for scores generated from that source. And you saw it here. The boys are really strong at winning the ball from these key areas, but their application and what to do when they've got it is appalling. And it's funny enough that when you look at the total total game meters ran by both sides. For all of that willing intent, Carlton are well lagging behind Collingwood in this game. And that's the big thing for me. And what I mean by this, and I want to show you an example. So what I've done here is I've gone back through the archives of this game. Uh, I've watched it a few times on dead slow. And We've gone into it. So what I want to show you here is just a prime example. And I'm going to use Carlton again as an example of just exiting uh, the defensive half. And you understand why Voss puts a lot of onus on this. It's something that he obviously prides himself on. And it's something that he's obviously trying to I wouldn't say fabricate, but this is something that is really important from defensive side. And what is really interesting is Collingwood aren't a very good side at scoring from turnover and transition in the defensive 50. That They pride themselves on their pressure around the ground. And it's funny that this is where Carlton are really trying to improve. And this is definitely something that negates it. Now, what you found here with Carlton is we have no run at the back half and Sardi has been kind of resigned to this quarterback role in the defensive half. Now, when you watch Collingwood, if we draw some lines here, right, with our tool, right, they really like to pressure these areas. And you found that if we drew lines here, they left 
this like area. They tried to condense Carlton's area, particularly kick-ins and D50. Now, what Carlton love to do here, and it blags my head, is they miss these short options. Now, we talked about distance run. Carlton were behind on that in a long way. This is definitely where the difference maintains because Saab genuinely, McGovern does this as well, runs to here and they kick to here. Now, you can see here that what this is requiring, and I'm going to give an example in a minute, is you are literally wanting this mark to be taken and then players run on. There's another kick, right? Another kick, probably Mackay runs on. Another kick bang into the into the forward 50 but what really out al reality happens is we drew these lines right this line here is all condensed with collingwood count and turn it over here repeat entry really easy to create the angle right of what you're looking for with without really trying to do too much right so then if we look here right what i want to show you is and then if we reset it, now, there was a few times that this happened. Now, you actually can see that Doc, in a few moments here, actually points to centre-half back, or he points to himself. And in an ideal world, and this happened for one of our goals in the fourth, right? There was a short kick here. And then from here, Doc moved forward and the players started to spread, right? And from there, there was a handball chain here. Do you know what I mean? They'd kick it out into the corridor, or they'd go back. There was lots of runners. And you saw that Collingwood, if we recreate how Collingwood exit and had real great success here, right? Is the real great success at this and really generated a lot of scores was their first kick is genuinely short to a, and then a runner comes inside and then they would have they would have gone like this they would have kept their keys here and they would have used their height of acres which we have and jsos ash johnson for them and they would have used these three the winger jsos and acres as their targets out of here and they're already up the ground to where the midfield protection is more and then they would have kicked and run on that way allowing then Mackay and Kerner, which you saw Mason Cox and co. do, to get up here with their smalls marauding forward. And it's running with, it's running with, which is a key issue for Carlton. The ability to run with the team at the moment is appalling. And that is probably their biggest bugbear as a side. Being there for your man. And the teamwork between Collingwood and Carlton at the moment is poles apart. And what we're talking about here is really core fundamental basics. At halftime, Carlton had a staggering 12 players without a tackle. In a game which, like we said, Carlton got first use quite a bit, but it was around that contested area. And they coughed it up quite a bit with loose handballs, poor dribble kicks. They couldn't try and get that space free. And you saw how it happened. Collingwood attract, attacking drubs. They've got a really fluid zone. And I've seen a lot of people talk about go back to a man-on-man -man system. The reason you can't go into a man-up man system is it's been dead for 10 years and it'll stay dead. It'll never come back. Throughout sport, the man-marking system has totally died because fluid zones are the way forward. And Collingwood are one of a couple of teams that now start to have this fluid zone coming left, right and centre. And... This really helps them out because what it means is everyone is involved in defence and attacking phases. Their players are very similar to ours. You see their smalls, Bobby Hill, Ginevan, they drop back quite a bit. You saw Bobby Hill take the ball at half-back flank. They do what Motlop and Durden do. The difference is, is they have the work rate to get ahead of the ball. And when they give it off, they work hard to get away from that problem. And it's because they run really hard together. They have a real understanding. And the big thing is, is that throughout the season, Carlton and mid-table for distance ran between, as a team in the competition. And that's a huge plus. They're the top half of that as well. They're a sixth. And that is really important that Carlton aren't an unfit side. But 
They run when they don't have to. And when they do have to, they don't. They're running games out. But that togetherness and connection is almost non-existent. And what I wanted to show you here is something that's really passionate to me, is how that looks when you actually watch the boys play. So if we go back to our little board, what I want to show you here is something that kills me as, as a fan, right? This is your back line here, right? Now, on average, their next kick is here. And the forwards are here. Now, it's about opening up your angles, right? I want you to think of opening up your angles. Now, Carlton's average inside 50, which everyone is talking about scoring shots, and it's such a fallacy because six of them were rushed behinds, right? And... Cowton's average mark inside 50 was around the 45 to 50. So let's just move that there, right? And it's because of the angle, right? Nearly 72% of Cowton's inside 50s came from this area here. Now, if you go and look at Collingwood, they spread their inside 50s. And the man that was here was Charlie Kerner. Charlie Kerner was, was targeted 10 times in the end of the game, where Collingwood spread theirs fourth apiece for Elliot, Majacek, Johnson, and Hill, and what and Elliot. And what they did is they spread it. And that's because Cowton have that little setup, like we said. The kick here, and then it's a scrap to get it here. Long bomb in, right? And it's not even a long bomb, it's like a bomb here. Where in the when they started to generate scores, and it was quite interesting. Matty's always goal was a great case in point. They actually went a different avenue to go, and they went short kick here, short kick here, run on handball here, right chip kick here, and they went back inside, which opened up this area here, and then they could generate the scores. And at the moment. That was the work rate issue we're talking about. Cowton's work rate off the ball, I would say at the moment, when they're playing bad and you saw it, it drops off so quickly, is how quickly Cowton resort to not running these aggressive runs. And these runs are really attacking runs because if you get caught in transition, it's funny. Because if you get caught in transition when you're making them attacking runs, the space in behind. But incidentally... What is happening with Cowton at the moment is if we go back to these lines that Cowton are focusing, right? And we look, we look at this. What you saw Collingwood do is once they turned the ball over here, they had all this space to work with. And then with a bit of foot speed, these lines would almost merge together, which then created gaps here. And that is why they were entering 50. Almost at will, and there was a great passage of play in the third where they started doing kick to kick outside Carlton's D50 because the connection and the cohesion of the lines is absolutely lost. Now, how do you fix that? Well, firstly, what Carlton have got to do is really address the elephant in the room, and that is their on ball contingent. And what you find here is Cripper is amazingly targeted by the opposition, and it's not the opposition's skill. What you find Carlton do when they win the taps is they fall back. So the players inside the square actually fall back. And before, when Carlton were dominating this scorage, and like I said, remember, one of the first sides to get the hands in the comp in the centre and stoppage clearances, they dominated this avenue this week, right? They ran on. You had this... You had this movement here. Instead of this movement, which we're seeing now, where Cowton fall back, and you see Pittenet. Pittenet is the worst for it. He just starts running off. There was a moment where Cox took the centre clearance because Pitto has already gone into his defensive set. They're anticipating losing it. You actually saw when Cripple won it last year that players would hang out the back and then would go forward off the ball and the wings would come round into this position. And that is where Cowton are going wrong. At the moment, they're isolating Crips. And he's only got one way to go. Boot kick up here, 
which is invariably a turnover here, which incidentally, 27 of their turnover points came from that centre clearance. And that has been a common cause throughout the week, throughout the season. Now, how do you fix it? I'm going to be honest. Like, I don't hate the game plan as much as other people. I see there's merit. But at the moment, these stats that I'm telling you, that's execution, application. And you saw it in the first five minutes where they were getting their head over the ball. They were running together. As soon as them two goals went in, that one from the turnover and then that one from centre clearance, it stops. You have players literally with the ball in hand looking up. And go back and watch the footage. Collingwood are working hard for that space. Count and a guard in the space. They're asking a player that can't even hit a 15-metre kick to suddenly hit a 45-metre kick on an angle through traffic. And these are bare essential basics. The pressure, right? Massive change. Count and hit that 2.01, the magical figure. Collingwood's kicking efficiency went from the high 70s to the low 40s in that second half. They're not getting close enough to the ball. They're not getting enough pressure around the ball. And it's becoming way too easy for teams. And what is sad is Collingwood are a well-oiled machine. But Cowton at the moment are a very rusted machine. And something has to be done quick, smart, because we're playing a shell shock team this week in Sydney. They are like us, right? They are having a horrible time at the moment. They are questioning a lot, right? A lot, a lot about themselves as well. This is the time that you've got to go. You've got to go. And some players this week were abhorrent, were abhorrent. Mitch McGovern, so integral to that back half movement, gave up on chases, didn't even attack the ball before he went forward. And when he went forward, you saw the level. The high half forwards, Jack Silvani, has to work hard for that space. He was super guilty before we went in the rut this week of literally just stood at half forward, where when you watch Ask Johnson, he's streaming to his wings. And Carlton need to get out of this habit of playing Pitonet, Kerno and Mackay in that wing so deep. They are so deep. Start using Acres. Start using Crips. That's what they did last year. They used to play Nooms there, and he was smaller than the average bear. And these are really fixable things, but these are things that in-game, the boys have to take some ownership on executing these basics because no game plan is going to work if you're not running. And an interesting little stat for you is... Collingwood actually kick longer than Carlton, right? Actually kick longer. We talk about the long bombs. They target the wing almost identical from exits out of D50. The fact that they dominated lead marks inside 50 tells you everything you need to know because they work so hard. Halfway through the third, and they won it by the end by plus 11 lead marks inside 50. It's how long they go. They go long down the wing, and then they're looking for that short option. If The short option is always paramount, and that is because Cowton are playing two on the wing and just hoping they mark it. Collingwood flood it when they go down there. And this is real basic things of just being in that application and in there. And the reason that they got so much ball was how they transition it with ease with their ability to run hard with and without the ball versus guarding space. And these are easily fixed. Problem is, is you see it switch off and switch on like a light switch. The problem is we don't have the button. The opposition does. Once that pressure goes around AFL average, these boys crumble at the moment. And the players have to take some accountability for that, some ownership. They know they're not playing well. But at the moment, it's abhorrent. It's abhorrent, the standard. And there's got to be a point that a bit of self-human pride kicks in. I want to run. I want to work hard. Because you can see there's no way in God's green earth the game plan is just stand there and hope to hit a target. 
regardless of what you think of Voss, he's not a clown. He knows these boys ain't going to kick at 95% every game. He needs them lead-up marks, and them lead-up marks are falling. The playing on from the mark is falling. The attack and will in the game is failing, and it switches like a switch under pressure. As soon as that pressure comes, Cowton starts to make life easy for themselves. Long kicks, commit less players at the fall of the ball, play them behind the ball, and try and contain it. And then they forget that once you've contained it, you've got to go forward. And I thought Voss touched on it pretty well. I thought he was quite naive not to talk about the forward connection. But I agree the defence, the ability to recover at the moment, is because too many players are flat-footed. They're caught in transition when we attack and defend. You watch some of them midfield group. You look at the goals that Collingwood are generating from the midfield group. Cowton are one of the worst sides in the league for scoring from midfield because the midfielders get caught almost in defence mode 24-7. They're always static. Where last year, Cripps was streaming into the forward line. Chesney was. Walsh was. When was the last time you saw Walsh blaze inside 50 and take the game on? I counted one time this year week. I counted two times the week before, where last year he was streaming in there, breaking a gut to get there, running hard both ways. And even Kennedy, he stands out because he does it. But even Kennedy's numbers have dropped. And this is something that the count and coaching staff have to address today very quickly. What is stopping them? I love that footage of Cripper and Voss. I don't think they were heated. I think they were the robust conversations that they need. I thought it was pretty tame in the end. But that needs to be looking at the captain. The captain has got to look at himself and say, where is that drive? Where is that will? Because even Cripper under pressure starts to go safe. And there has to be a point that we don't need to be beaten by 30, 40 points to suddenly switch that on. Because I agree with Voss. They need nourishment on the scoreboard. but. When you're going down that left-hand side, as we showed you on that graph and how predictable it is, Darcy Moore didn't have 11 intercept marks, now changed to 10 because he's better than Carlton's forwards. He had it because he was the only one who knew where it was coming, which is a shock because I think 98,000 people at the MCG and probably 4.8 million people watching around the world knew where it was coming. And they are products of their environment. Because they don't run, there is no short options. Because there is no short options, the long options there. And Collingwood actually amused me because at times they were outnumbered down the back because they knew what was going to happen. They knew how to spread. Them two goals they scored on the bounce in the second half, it's miraculous that they actually guarded the fat side and the short side, knowing that they could transition at will. And it was easy handballs run and stun over Cowton's forward press, knowing that there was a huge gap to get to the midfield. And by the time that they got to the midfield, the midfield had to come off their men to pick up the loose runners. Them loose runners now were behind them. And before you know it, easy kicks, them little 20 meter stab kicks they do, and it's game over. And that needs to be ironed out. And that is, before we talk about game plan, I know everyone's hot on the game plan, they can't apply themselves to the basics of every game plan. Running off the ball, marks on the lead are all essentials of every known game plan in the history of AFL going back to the dark ages. And it's simple stuff. And there has to be a point, personal pride, a bit of fucking, like, screw the club for a minute. These are elite level athletes. There's got to be a moment that they look at this and go, fuck. I'm not working hard enough. I've got not got the commitment. I've not got the energy. And why? Because at the, the moment, I am seeing 20 players out of 23 in self-preservation mode for over 55% of the game. A lot to work on. And honestly, it's tough. It's a tough watch. It's a tough watch at the moment because when your basics leave you, you can't talk about anything else. The scoreboard nourishment ain't going to get fixed unless they start giving themselves options. Because when you're targeting, 
Charlie that many times versus how they spread it. It's insane. Do you know what I mean? Right. Four different targets on three occasions in that fourth quarter. Cox, Johnson, Majacek, Elliott to Kerno and Mackay. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. Nine times Charlie was targeted. Nine times. Right? That is crazy making up 20% when they've spread theirs between their forward group. It is a real concern how one-dimensional that is. And that is a product of the angles. They don't change the angles on the inside 50. It is literally left side, deep kick, 75 out to a mark 50 out, where they were averaging 32 metres from goal. You don't miss them. You don't miss them. People talk about counting scoring efficiency. The scoring shots are big for Gazis. Big for Gazis for me. And it really kills me because so many rushed behinds for Carlton. Do you know what I mean? So many rushed behinds, which you can't really count as the scoring shots that people look at. It's poor. A lot to work on for the boys. A lot of work to do. And I'm craving some basics from the lads, right? When you're winning at the centre clearance to rank that bad, you've got to start asking yourself questions. What is going? What is going on in their minds, in their application? What is being said to them? What are they saying on field? Because Cripps isn't a boffin. He's been here before. He was part of that midfield that started to dominate around stoppage and clearances. And that was our only avenue to go. It made up at one point of the season nearly 80% of our scores. Real big things to take home. And boys, if one of you watches this, submit to the, submit to yourselves. Dive in. We're diving in. Every week we dive in with you. Fucking dive in. Take the game on. Be bold. I wouldn't mind doing one of these reviews if we lost by 70 and I said to you, fuck, the boys were too aggressive. Their running patterns were too aggressive. But watch it. Go back and watch Bobby Hill. The amount of times he's in the back half, he's actually more than Motlop. And then watch Carlton when they transition the ball. Bobby Hill will be inside 50 every time the ball gets there. Motlop isn't. These are basic, small forwards getting in forward 50. The key forwards getting inside forward 50. At the moment, something has to change. They have to be bold and more aggressive because we're going to have some tough conversations at the end of the year, if not. They've got to turn it around. No if, buts and maybes. Got to turn it around. Hope everyone's doing well. I'll see you tonight on the Blue Abroad show. We've got a double header tonight, so I can't wait to see you all. Love you all implicitly. You know that. Palm out. I'm rolling up over black Cadillac High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats Baby's bad, oh baby's hella bad